process of automating the public financial management system commenced in 2003, as the Permanent Secretary has just said, when the government, through the Ministry of Finance, coordinated the initial phase of implementation. At the time, the public financial management sector was undergoing far-reaching reforms as espoused in the Economic Recovery Strategy for Wealth and Employment Creation. And IFMIS was one of the many interventions introduced in this regard. However, the implementation of IFMIS did encounter its fair share of challenges, and these challenges ranged from technology-based uh, systemic issues, proliferation of independent public financial management initiatives, we can say lack of political will, change management challenges, capacity constraints, the existence of parallel manual systems, and a disjointed and often less than optimal internal and external communication infrastructure. The full integration of the financial management processes has therefore never been fully actualized. Indeed, it's for these reasons that the government, through the Ministry of Finance, has sought to reinvigorate the potential that IFMIS portends. Firstly, we have established an IFMIS department within the Ministry of Finance, tasked with spearheading the re-engineering of IFMIS, and whose first output is the re-engineering IFMIS strategic plan, which we are launching here today. The re-engineered IFMIS envisioned in this strategic plan will ensure that all users across the board are able to adhere to common standards, rules, and procedures with a view to reducing risks of mismanagement of public resources through greater comprehensiveness and transparency of information. It will strengthen the, the efficiency of financial controls by making comprehensive, reliable, and timely financial information available as they improve accounting recording, reporting practices through the provision of timely and accurate financial data, a standardized integrated financial management reporting system, and an upgraded computerized accounting system. This information will be available not just to the Treasury, but to all users in government, the Auditor General, Parliament, investigative and prosecutorial agencies, development partners, and indeed the general public. Numerous benefits of a re-engineered IFMIS can be cited, and these include improved management of resources, leading to value for money, reduced fraud and corruption due to improved transparency and accountability, real-time processing leading to lower transaction costs, readily available status reports that will enhance capacity to track budgets, payments and cash balances, and thereby enabling effective decision making, comprehensive real-time recording of financial transactions, and online electronic data exchange between the Treasury system and central agencies. Additional benefits from the re-engineered IFMIS include an enhanced ability to monitor revenue and disbursement, and thereby inform policy commitments during the fiscal year. Accurate forecasts that facilitate risk management and minimize arrears accumulation, enhanced capacity to consolidate data from spending units and, comp and compiling complete and up-to-date data for budget processes, capacity to produce relevant, standard, and accurate consolidated financial statements, thereby eliminating lags in reporting, Dig digitalization of key government documents, ensuring financial accounting information is assembled and reported objectively, a backup and disaster recovery system to guarantee uninterrupted provision of government services, and eventually, the re-engineered IFMIS is expected to provide a platform 
for the operation of a single treasury account. This not only plays an important role in streamlining the efficiency and effectiveness in the management of public financial resources, but will further contribute to our fight against corruption through the promotion of greater transparency of information across government institutions. The re-engineered IFMIS is envisioned as core in our public financial reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, the need for a reinvigorated IFMIS has also been necessitated so as to conform to the institutional and administrative and process review requirements of our Vision 2030 and indeed our new constitution. As a nation, we have collectively affirmed our aspirations to become a middle-income economy through a devolved governance structure previously unknown and hence untested in this country and by reviewing our infamous objectives. At this time, the government indeed seeks to streamline the public financial management system in preparation for synchronizing to the new structures to be formed as constitutionally provided. This initiative is further buttressed by the need to consolidate and further capitalize on the full potential of IFMIS in promoting good governance and supporting anti-corruption interventions, as well as efficient and effective management systems for the utilization of public resources. You will therefore find strategic actions within this plan, proposing measures to be undertaken to conscript all the necessary modules, software requirements, communication structures, and interagency linkages necessary to transform the framework into the ideal, comprehensive, consolidated, and integrated financial management system. Through this re-engineering, the government hopes to also address the change management and communication challenges previously experienced in the pilot phase of implementation that greatly contributed to the lackluster performance of the system. The strategic plan has thus identified the political and administrative and capacity constraints that require rigorous intervention in order to secure the buy-in and ownership attributes necessary within ministries and departments to facilitate effective implementation of IFMIS and to improve the confidence of all relevant stakeholders. The IFMIS strategic plan has further identified the need to streamline existing silo-based PFM interventions into a coherent and cohesive framework as originally intended. We therefore call for the support and cooperation of the different institutions to help in meeting this core objective that is intended to not only enhance but expound on the common objectives. Ladies and gentlemen, the strategic plan that we are launching here today will therefore guide the achievement of the bold, ambitious plan that we have set. It will provide a roadmap outlining the key processes, resource requirements and priorities necessary to achieve the set objectives within a specified time frame. Collaboration with other ministries and departments is key to the successful implementation of this strategy. We therefore acknowledge the support given so far in developing the strategic plan from the various ministries and institutions through the many consultative meetings and interactions. All contributions have enriched the document that we are about to launch today, and we especially acknowledge the role and contribution of the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology, and the ICT Board in supporting the development of the form and structure of interventions that we see in the strategic plan. The if IFMIS re-engineering process is also keen to take advantage of the extended support and partnership and learning opportunities of all stakeholders, including our development partners and the private sector. And in this regard also, I wish to extend my appreciation to the development partners of the PFM sector group who have contributed to the necessary financial and technical support to the government's aspirations within public financial management reform. And in particular, 
I wish to express our sincere appreciation to the GTZ for providing technical support in the development of this plan. Ladies and gentlemen, the preparation of this plan has been guided by our ministry's need to uphold its vision, key operational values, and the need to realize our mission. I therefore pledge to maintain a keen interest in the way the plan is implemented towards realizing these goals and will make myself accessible for any necessary leadership, support and guidance. And I wish to invite all stakeholders to join in implementing the strategic plan and to give support whenever called upon to do so. I'm indeed confident that we will collectively achieve the goals set out in this plan of a secure, reliable, efficient, effective, and a fully integrated financial management system that will be for the benefit of all Kenyans. It is indeed now my pleasure to declare the IFMA strategic plan officially launched and at the same time really call on all of us at the Treasury. This time we must make it work and we can make it work. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all the departments that have been involved in getting us to where we are, for the close cooperation that they've had, the good working relationship that they've had, and I am convinced if that continues, we will be able to make this a success. We will be able to extend this to the rest of government, and we need to also be able to change our attitudes and realize that change must come and it is for us to be agents of that change as opposed to being obstacles to that change. That change is what will enable us to take this country indeed to greater heights. I congratulate the team at the ministry. I congratulate all our collaborators at various ministries, our development partners. Let's make this thing work for Kenya. God bless and thank you very much.